pastor started out the sermon, what is our biggest blessing? I could go on and on. But the biggest one is when I came into this church, became the adult ministry coordinator here. My heart has been just busting with all the joy. One of the biggest joys is that on Sundays, I sit in the pew or at home in front of my TV if I'm deciding to have a PJ day. And all of a sudden, the children are invited up to join Haley at the front of the church. The children sometimes come running and giggling. Sometimes they come shy. But many times, they're all the way across the front of this church. Today, we witnessed the little one. I need to start bringing boxes of Kleenexes to church because it's just beautiful. Haley's sharing a message with them. She's telling stories about Jesus and faith and God and love. Eternal life as she invites them downstairs to the Sunday school classroom. That is a ministry. When you look at those children, are they not worthy of our love, our, our time, our talent, and our money to support the ministries? Oh, yes, I said that word. But you're used to me asking for things. You've come forward many, many times last year donating over 600 greeting cards, and then many of you signing those greeting cards that went to nursing homes, assisted living throughout Dodge County. We have folks that are making blankets, crocheted, quilted, no so, that go to people that need a little extra love, be it maybe they're in the hospital, or just need somebody to say, I care. It's symbolic to let them know that this church cares about them. We did the witches downtown. This week we're going to be out at the YMCA for their trunk or treat. We're going to be at the fire department for a safe trunk or treat. We're constantly trying to up where can we be? Where can we send the light of Christ into the world? How can we support this not only inside of our church as well as outside? I lay awake many nights. Many of you will notice from time to time, why does she got dark circles? It's because I'm trying to figure out what is next. What can we do? Where is that breakthrough? That breakthrough prayer has been so powerful this year, inviting us to let God take us and lead us. We'd like to share with you a little example. We were both at a, uh, what do you call that? We were downstairs in Fellowship Hall. A seminar, thank you. I couldn't figure that word. A seminar, and a gentleman talked. And he was teaching us things that just resonated. And it's this ladder, these steps, that Pastor was talking about earlier. Judy and I got together and thought, how can we kind of make an example to kind of have a picture? So we talk about, if you're on that very first step that you haven't been able to give to the church, we know that there's financial things that many of us have, and you say, I'm on a fixed income. But, but, would you be willing to go from that step up one by giving a roll of toilet paper per week to the church for a year? The equivalent. Maybe you were on that step already, and you wanted to go up. What would it look like if you say, hold it, Lord. What does the church need for the ministries? We all know that the lights bill goes up in heat. We know that things keep costing more, but how can we keep going forward in that mission? Is it worth buying the church a happy meal each week? Then if you're there, what it would look like to do a Culver's meal? Yes, yes. What would it look like? We all go out to eat. We love to eat. We're Methodist. So next time you're sitting in one of these restaurants or having breakfast on a Sunday morning, can I go up that next step? And then if you're in the middle and you think, well, where can I go from there? I wrestled with that myself after that meeting. I looked what I'd been giving to the church. And I thought, well, I give of my time, Lord. I give of my talents. And the Lord thumped me on the back of the head. 
Yes, Lord. I can take another step up. And that might be the equivalent of groceries, a bag of groceries each week. Now, again, I'm using the word equivalent. Please do not come running into Janine on Monday morning with some rolls of toilet paper or some Culver's meals or groceries. Now, if you choose to bring in a happy meal, I won't say no. <laughs> but we just wanted to, to, to resonate. How do we keep this ministry flourish? This church has been my home church since 2004, and I want you to know it has held me up. God has held me, pushed me, shoved me, and I love what we do. The people you all keep figuring out and helping us, let's do more. So let's make this the year to celebrate. Now Jude, Judy would like to tell you about her breakthrough in wrestling with God. Well, you're seeing the breakthrough right now. I do not like to speak in front of large groups. I do small, little gatherings very well, I think, but this is way out of my wheelhouse. So this is my breakthrough of my own barriers, just as our prayer is like. But I really love my church. I love how it blesses me all the time. And this church is richly blessed. In here, we have a wonderful pastor, a absolutely outstanding secretary. We have talented musicians that are always playing music for us. We have um, a custodian who takes care of this building. It's warm in the winter. It's clean when you walk in any day of the week. It is never messy. It's never dirty and dusty. Uh, we are blessed to have Mitch in our midst. And within this congregation are people that volunteer to do Bible studies, to help us on our faith journey ahead. We are richly, richly blessed with that. This is this church. And it's a place always to grow in your faith. And I, like Jacob, have wrestled with what we're talking about in our ministry. Ten years ago, my husband died, and I struggled when it came to the stewardship drive. I didn't know if I could survive and meet all the needs that I had. I had never done this on my own. I always had my husband there with me, making the decisions. And so this was a big step forward. And much like the step staircase that we have pictured up here, I started. I just gave what I, we had done the year, that year before. I did the same thing. But then as I went through and I prayed and I really wrestled with God, and he one day said to me, Judy, what is it that you think you need? You have everything you need. You are blessed. Just trust me. And so in the journey, of the 10 years, I have gone, sometimes they're not full steps, sometimes I take half steps and quarter steps, depends on how I feel about what I got to do all year. And I have now joined the group of one step at a time. This I started 10 years ago, so it's not a new concept. But I know that as everybody thinks about it, please don't just put a number on the giving card. Pray about it first. Let God direct you and illuminate that path that he wants you on. And I want to share this with you, is that any penny that I've given to this church and out in all the mission drives we have, I have never missed one of them. They have all been a blessing, and I am richer for it. Thank you. <laughs>